Hello, my name is Lee Mack. I'm with Goldway USA out of New York. Uh, today we're going to talk about the TRIO laser. It's a 10 watt class 4 therapy laser, but it also does soft tissue dentistry and light surgery. Today we're specifically going to talk about the therapy aspects of the TRIO laser. Uh, the laser is already set up. We have already have it plugged in to the AC. You have an AC adapter that's plugged into the wall. You can also run this off of battery power. It's a 22 watt uh, battery. And to turn it, if for safety and setup, please see your manual. First turn it on, the code is four zeros. If you make a mistake, just go ahead and retype it in and clear it and retype it in. Uh, it'll go to this menu first, which is just a basic protocol menu, which was the last menu that you would have used. Uh, you can hit protocols and we have feline, canine, equine, small animal surgery and soft tissue dentistry and settings. Uh, if you go into settings, you can adjust. This is where you can adjust all your custom settings. So as you become more uh, proficient with the laser, you can actually customize and do exactly the settings and uh, the frequencies and hertz that you'd like. Okay, after you're in the main menu, you can choose the species that you're gonna treat th with the therapy laser. Today we're gonna do canine and we have presets that are already predetermined for the typical dog. The typical dog would be 50 to 55 pounds. Depending on the size of the patient, you will want to turn the laser up or down. You can go back. In the options key, you can do settings. So this is where you can actually set the brightness of your pilot laser, which is the red light. You can set the sound level for your beeps. If you have an anxious patient, you can turn down the sound totally and then the backlight of the screen. And you can also turn your timer on or off. Okay. So some of the other features of the laser as you go through each species, you do have a protocol for different treatments for the animal. Once you found a treatment that you want to execute and use on the patient, hit enter. This is the base uh, wattage that would be for a typical patient. You can turn it up or down depending on the patient. We'll discuss that in the next section. At that point, you can either use the four-way key or the touch pad to adjust by 0.10 of a watt. So if we want to turn up to three, and then we go right to ready. Now the laser targeting light is on. And at that point, once you're ready to treat, you can depress the finger switch and you'll hear a beeping sound that shows that the laser is operating. You can depress it again to go to standby and just have your targeting beam. And then you can go to standby on the, on the laser to adjust the treatment wattage or to go back to your uh, main protocols. And for, again, like we talked about, if we go to equine and we go to back and hit enter, Typical is eight and a half watts. That's for about 1,100 pound horse. And the felines are about for a 10 pound cat. So you have to use your clinical judgment to decide if you want to turn the wattage up or down depending on what you're treating. So some of the other options are timer, which you can have a timer. And this is just your information on your laser. If you ever have a warranty claim on the info key, uh, it gives you all the information, serial number, and that. And if you ever get in a situation where you're not sure where you're at, go back to protocols. It'll take you to the main menu. When you're finished with the laser, you can turn just a finger switch off here. So if you feel that the patient didn't receive enough of the laser treatment, you can go back and recycle and do that same protocol again. You can do a partial protocol, so you can do phase one and two only then stop the laser, or you can turn the wattage down to achieve the amount of joules per centimeter squared that you need for that uh, patient. If you ever have an emergency situation where you have somebody entering a room that doesn't have uh, safety goggles on, or you're in a situation where you can't treat a patient efficiently and you need to stop very quickly, you can press, depress the stop key. It won't let the laser turn back on until you twist it and release it. So there's several protocols that you can use to be safe. Um, first is finger switch, second is toggle switch over here, third would be the standby, and then the fourth is the emergency stop. And I can demonstrate 
Also that you can use this mouse device to choose your setting. And then you can also use a touchpad or you can manually go down and adjust the power using the four-way pad. And when we're running the laser, uh, if we can see this on the film, we have our wavelength, we have our time. This will de show as, up here it'll show as continuous or a wave. The wave indicates that you're in a hertz frequency. The continuous is one block up and straight. And that means you're in continuous mode. And the rest of it is battery power and the sound setting that you have on the laser at that time. And that is it. If you, to, to assemble and disassemble the laser, you can uh, look at the manual. It goes over that in detail and step. Uh, keys to running it is the laser optic fiber has to be very tight. Make sure that it has to be, it has to be clean. To clean the handpiece, uh, simply take off the standoff, unscrew it like in a counterclockwise, just like you would a normal threaded screw. This is aluminum, you can autoclave it. Uh, we have a cleaning kit. You need to keep this lens clean of uh, any dander or dust uh, as you treat. Uh, probably every six to eight treatments, you definitely want to wipe this off. Uh, if it's a, a dusty animal, right after that treatment. Uh, after you've cleaned the lens with the, the uh, Goldway cleaning kit for the lens, uh, you, can put, you can put the standoff back on. Simply screw it on. Goldway will have offer multiple standoffs, so if you want to autoclave all of them and have multiple for use, we can have, we, we, will, we will have that. We will have multiple standoffs available, so if you want to clean and autoclave them, you can. We're also working on a plastic disposable cover that will go on the handset and be able to be used as a, as a one-time use only. And on maintenance on the other side, make sure your optic fiber when you disassemble uh, is covered. There's, that's what this cap is for in the instructions and that'll keep your diode clean and dust free. And you can use your cleaning kit on the end a little bit definitely keep this covered and, and clean and dust free. If you don't, the optic fiber will eventually burn out. And that's it. For equine, for equine applications, the easiest way to treat is to have this in your left hand, if you're right-handed. You can put the optic fiber around your body and you can get down to lower positions and get up on a back, the lasers in your hand away from the horse uh, if, if they decide to kick or, uh, or back up. Uh, your lasers in hand, not on the ground. Uh, this is the easiest way to put the cord around your neck to keep it out of the way of, of feet and moving hoofs. So the battery will run for approximately two to three uh, treatments or about 45 minutes to an hour of battery time before you need to recharge it. And that is running at full 10 watts. So depending on what you're treating, uh, your battery can last anywhere from as short as 50 minutes to as long as three hours. Okay, today, uh, so this section, we already have laser on. It's already had the keys, key put in to get into the protocol. I've already hit canine. And today we have Joker with us. He is a six-year-old Australian Shepherd. And this is, again, a training video. This isn't real treatment. So uh, we're assuming the dog has got some degenerative disc issues and a arthritic stifle. Or you can also assume that he's had a cruciate surgery that you're trying to get to heal better or a uh, tibial tuberosity advancement surgery that you're also trying to get the bone cells to lay down more efficiently. So again, depending on what you're treating, it can take about uh, two to seven minutes of actual laser time with the patient. So at this point, Joker is about the average dog size. 
and we're going to do a stifle, but you can turn it up to, let's say, 3.5, depending on your clinical judgment. Stifle's a pretty small joint on this animal, so I'll go down to about a 25 millimeter spot size. Before I start, some things to consider when you're treating the animal is, first off, uh, how many injuries and conditions they have. You can only put so much energy into the animal depending on their weight, age, and, and metabolic rate and expect good results. So on a dog this size, you may be able to put in 1,500 to 2,000 joules at a max and expect the body to, to react uh, well to the laser and to regenerate those cells faster. So if this dog was 12 years old, you might want to cut your dosage down as far as your total joules. If the patient is not well hydrated or has poor nutrition, this will also attribute to uh, more time to get uh, the condition fixed with the laser. You want a well hydrated patient, you want a well good nutrition with the animal, uh, you want the right rest and, and, and uh, exercise for the condition to stimulate the cells to regenerate. The uh, other thing that you need to consider is the tissue that you're going through. If you're going through a soft, if you're working on soft tissue edema congestion that has more water, you're going to go down about two and a half inches. If you're going through solid bone like a fatlock on a horse, it's going to go down about two inches. So you have to consider the, uh, he's going to be a little submissive with us today. The, uh, the area that you're going through. So if we're just focusing on the stifle here, it's a small area. So it's not gonna take the energy of let's say his back or his hip. And also if you have a really small dog and you're doing a carpus or tarsus, you wanna consider this a very small area volume wise. So don't just think of surface area and 100 centimeter squares. Think of the volume of the area that you're treating. The volume of his of his paw is very small compared to what a Newfoundland might be or also the volume of his, of his hip. So with that in mind, those are some things to consider when you're treating and you can change your clinical, based on your clinical judgment, but uh, keep those in the back of your mind when you're evaluating and treating the animal. So get ready again, this is just training. So we're just gonna use the uh, targeting beam on the animal since we're actually not doing it. If we were actually treating him, I'll show you on the uh, towel here. You depress the button, your laser is going to beep, and it's going to go through the protocols. So, for training purposes, uh, some of your techniques, if we have a, a TTA surgery, you're still going to get the depth you need without even touching the patient just by going over this. You, if you got a long hair patient, you can bring the fur back as you treat in a painting motion. You wanna start with the main area of the injury first. Uh, some techniques you have se possibly seen where they wet the dog down. You can do that if you'd like. You don't necessarily have to. And you also wanna consider the coat color. This black hair is gonna conduct the infrared light a lot more than this light gray hair would, or even the light brown or white. The white's gonna conduct less so the darker the hair and also the darker the skin coat, and this guy's got some really light skin, so you don't have to go nearly as fast, but if you have a chow where they have dark skin and possibly dark hair, you'd want to turn your laser down by about 40% to 50% less, or you'd want to move your handset faster, depending on the area you're treating. If you're not used to the laser, turn down the wattage to half and go through two, two protocols instead of the one, you'll achieve the same thing. And the other technique is if this wasn't a TTA and he is arthritic, you can use a rotation technique. And, we, and again, we talked about volume. You don't need to do the underside if we're getting at the joint necessarily. You can if you want to get at an angle, but we are going about two inches through. So if you look at a stifle, it's probably about an inch and a half. So we're actually coming through the other side. So you tell your technicians, unless it's thick, they don't even need to go through the other side. But to get to that arthritic joint, you can do this rotation and treat them like so. Again, if it was a surgery or an injury or fracture, you don't have to touch patient, but you can just pull the hair back a little bit and paint. For a hip situation, you can again do the same thing, pull this back and paint. And you can do what we're trying to achieve. If you think about this as you're treating, you know your anatomy, you know where that hip joint is, you know where the injury is. 
you want to you want to think of the laser as two to two and a half inches out from your standoff. That's your working depth. So, again, with your clinical judgment and knowing the anatomy of your patient, you know where you need to get to. So, depending on where you need to get to, you can do this if it's arthritic. You can paint. You can do a spot technique. The whole idea is to get that two and a half inches of that laser cylinder down to the the area that's injured or is arthritic. For degenerative backs, you're only going to be able to get to it one way. Some of the areas on the animal you're not going to be able to reach on in both directions, such as the back or the, the anterior side of the spine versus the posterior. So you can actually just try to get at it from angles and from straight. And again, the hip joint, you're not going to be able to get at it from a, a medial side, just the, the lateral side from and front and rear, so that kind of thing. If you're dealing with multiple, I'm going to turn this to standby again. If you're dealing with multiple injuries uh, and you have multiple things, the fractures and tendons are going to take longer to heal. If you have a dog that's been hit by a car or has edema and congestion, uh, that'll heal faster. You can. You don't want to tax the body too much when you're treating. Again, keep that total jewel for the size of the animal in mind when you're treating. Uh, obviously, a Newfoundland can take a lot more energy because they have a lot more body mass than a Jack Russell might be able to. So depending on the age of the patient, if it's a young dog that's been hit by a car, you can work on multiple areas. You can work on the fractures. You can work on the edema congestion and swelling and surgical points. If it's a very old dog that has arthritic joints, a degenerative back, you might, depending again on your clinical judgment, he's getting relaxed here. Um, I guess he wants his stomach scratched. You can, <laughs> you can uh, work on the back first and then go to the extremities. So in, in that type of situation with the older patients that are going to take longer, you may want to consider telling the client that, uh, that you're going to do a back first and then work on, on the arthritic stifle and carpus tarsus. So depending on your treatments, treatments can go from six to eight treatments. They should be done uh, every other day. I explain to your client that it's like penicillin. You can't just take one or two doses. You have to take the whole series. So charge for the series. Don't charge for individual unless you have a dog coming back for just follow-up uh, every other month for like arthritic conditions. So you want to explain to them that it can take six to eight treatments. They should see results by the fifth treatment. And from a practice standpoint, you want to treat this like you would a nail trim. You as a doctor do the diagnosis, maybe do the first treatment or have your tech do the first treatment. Uh, we will have forms that you can use that you can that have all the indications and correspond to our menu. So you can easily circle and go through the uh, protocol that you want the tech to follow. And <laughs> we have quite the actor here. But from treatments two through five or two through seven, what you want to do is you want to have your tech just treat, just, like, just treat it like a nail trim you would have in a clinic. So the tech would bring in the animal go through your, your prescription on the laser, treat the animal five to seven minutes, uh, depending as to what it's going to take, and maybe 10, 12 if the dog needs to relax a little bit. And then they just turn it back to the owner, and the owner takes the, uh, the animal home again. But uh, that's going to be the most efficient way, unless you're in an equine situation, then call us. We can talk to you about specific equine situations and how to treat them. But for a small animal practice, the best is to have the tech just do uh, most, of your, most of your treatments. It's the most cost effective and you will get a good return on investment. Okay, this is a feline section. Uh, for your small animal practice, if you do, do uh, have some arthritic cats that come in or you have a feline only practice, you can definitely use a laser for a lot of applications with the cat. Some of the other applications you can use it for is for feline stomatitis and, and antimicrobial aspects uh, for the uh, gum line areas for the cat. Uh, if your cat's very afraid of, of the laser or is, just doesn't like being in the vet's office altogether, you can and you're afraid of the cat uh, getting in the line of fire of the laser, you can simply just take and put 
this on during treatment. Uh, if your patient is a little bit more relaxed, like this rag doll, and you're not worried about it, and you're doing a, a, a hindquarter area treatment, uh, you can get back and have somebody assist, or just hold them yourself, and you can just rotate your animal and get in the right position. And even before you turn it on, you can also just get them to get a feel for that thing, kind of check it out and know that they're not getting poked or prodded with anything today. So on this, on this little, little cat, we, we turned the power down because she's about eight, nine pounds. So we turned it down a little bit. And when, when you're in question, um, you know, just treat under. You can always go back and treat again if you feel like you didn't get the amount, the correct amount of jewels in the animal. You can always uh, go back and go through a second round of treatment until you get a little bit more comfortable treating uh, that size of cat. So, so we got the cat just a, a little nervous here. We're going to do a stifle, arthritic stifle, or and again, we're just turning the targeting beam on the laser. We're not actually treating a, a healthy animal here. Uh, so for training purposes, we just have, you won't hear the beep and we're just gonna have the targeting beam. But you can kind of see the techniques and how the animal's gonna react. So once you get it kind of comfortable with everything, you know, go ahead, put your safety glasses on. If you do have a little bit of a nervous cat, which she isn't, but we have a, a assistant here to help hold her if she does get a little antsy. And uh, just go to it. You'd, at this point, you'd depress, your, uh, you'd depress your button. I do have the wattage turned down a little bit because she's a smaller cat. Always treat a little bit under instead of using too much right off until you get really comfortable. And for this arthritic stifle, she's kind of got it pulled in, this leg pulled in, and, and uh, I'm just gonna go around it. I can feel my joint. I know where I need to go. Uh, she's a younger, younger cat, so again, consider the nutrition, hydration, condition of the cat that you're treating. Um, most of the time, in my experience, uh, especially with equine and canine, uh, by about the third or fourth treatment, your patient will actually enjoy this uh, once they get past the point of that you're not going to poke or prod them. So you can do it at different angles. Again, you can do the different techniques of the rotation to get it into a joint area. And for demonstration purposes, if the cat had a back issue, we could just do this. If you were by yourself, you could hold the cat, protect its eyes, and work your way up and down the vertebrae. You can also use a painting technique. You can also turn your spot size down to whatever you think is best for your clinical application. And right now, I think our patient's kind of getting used to the idea that she's just kind of being petted with this aluminum thing. And go through the treatment protocols, and then turn your laser off, give the patient some reassurance, record um, the jewels, the treatment, the amount of uh, the protocols, any protocols you may have changed kind of on the fly. Uh, if you think you needed to adjust something, uh, make notes of uh, range of motion or anything else going on with the patient that you treated with the laser. And then, uh, again, you know, with your client, make sure they understand it. six to eight treatments. For some arthritic conditions, it can take eight treatments and then bring the animal back every, every two to three, as, as, as much as every two to three weeks or as, as long as every two or three months, again, depending on the and condition. But for arthritic conditions, it's about every two months. So we're gonna lose our patient here. She's ready to go home. I'm going to send her on her way. But uh, when you get done, again, your jewel counter will have the jewels. Record that, and then you can turn it off, and uh, you're done with the treatment. Laser. Today we're talking about the TRIO laser. It's the first laser in the veterinary medical field that offers three functions. It does therapy, small animal surgery, and small animal soft tissue dentistry. So anything from formectomies to gingivectomies to deep pockets uh, retraction and retraction of the gum line to tighten up against the teeth. It can do all these things that you've probably seen in human dentistry and soft tissue lasers. It has the same uh, 
applications has similar software to the human soft tissue dentistry lasers and can do all the functions that you would normally see in human dentistry. Uh, it is designed for small animals, uh, not equine. The small animal surgery settings are for light surgeries such as uh, tumor removals on ears and eyelids. It's designed for small cat, cat declaws. Uh, it is not designed to do any large uh, operations or amputations. The, um, obviously, we don't have the surgical handset here today. It would be a foot pedal with a different handset and a, either 200 micron or 400 micron uh, optic fiber to cut with. Um, again, this is the only one like it in the world that does all three. On the therapy side, we have the therapy handset that we went over earlier uh, with the finger switch uh, connected as opposed to a foot pedal that you use on the other two applications. Uh, it is touch screen, uh, features all the different settings. You can save uh, multiple custom settings under different numbers. And for your specific practice or specific applications, if you're using it on avian or zoologics, you can set up your own protocols. If you become more advanced with the laser, you can come up with your own protocols and different phases and save those in, in the laser, both for surgery, dentistry, and for therapy. So it's a very versatile laser. Uh, it does have, right now, it's been running on the, uh, the battery. It's a lithium ion, 22 watt battery. It uh, has both touch screen here and a controller that's a four-way direction. If you, you don't want to use this, you can use a four-way controller. We will have slip screens that cover this if you want to use it in a surgical setting and want a sterile cover over the top of it so you can go through and have your technician touch this as you're using it for the surgeries. <coughs> and I'll rotate this here. It does have a door interlock, so if you are using it for surgery applications, you can connect this to your door. If someone opens the door, it will shut the laser off. Right now, we have this uh, override key in it for the therapy applications. Uh, it's simple to change out. It takes about a minute to switch it from a therapy setting to a surgery setting, and it's very light, very portable for equine applications. You can carry it around with you, it's a, just a few pounds. Um, you can, it does have a top uh, handle. It does have a top handle that you can connect or hold on in that fashion if you're treating. Uh, the pin piece you see over here is actually for the, the surgical setting, so you can put the wheel of optic fiber on there. It's off right now because we're doing therapy on this. It does have the hand holder for the surgical hand piece. And as you can see, you have cooling fans that ha are easy, open, and can keep the diode cool for long periods of time and not overheat. That's another key feature to the laser. But, uh, but keep in mind, whenever you're treating something that you're not sure of, always under treat six to nine joules per centimeter squared. Is typical range. Anytime you, we've seen uh, in research, anytime you go over 10, you can have contraindications with older patients where you'll swell, have some swollen joints, that kind of thing. Nothing too terribly bad, but you don't want to have a treatment go uh, in the wrong direction. So, again, when you're assessing the patient, assess nutrition, hydration, age, metabolic rate. Uh, obviously, a one year old dog is going to heal a lot faster than a 12 or 14 year old dog. Uh, you got to consider um, that when you're, and also the volume and the, the density of the area you're treating. If you're treating bone, it's going to go down a little bit less than if you're treating soft tissue. If the tissue is well hydrated, it's going to uptake the laser therapy a little, a little better than an animal that's not hydrated. So depending on if you have those contraindications, you need to turn the power down probably a little bit for those treatments and maybe treat a few more times. So instead of a six treatment protocol, you may have an eight treatment or nine if it's an older patient that doesn't have really good nutrition. So you're just asking the body to, to re reproduce those cells healthier just at a little slower rate than you would with a, with a, with a healthy patient. So, um, that's some of the things to consider. Also consider the volume, keep in mind that, and, and keep in mind your anatomy, and always think of that laser going two and a two and a half inches down. So 
if you know where you need to get to to treat a certain joint or certain area of the animal, you need to think in three dimensions. So you, you may overlap. So be careful of, of joints and stifles on small animals where you're gonna blow through and go through the other side anyway, because like on our Australian Shepherd, he's only about an inch and a half thick. We're actually coming through the other side. So you really don't need to go back and do the medial and lateral side. You can just do the lateral and you'll still have the same efficacy. So we feel the trio is the very the most versatile laser in the veterinary industry right now and is a very good uh, investment for doing multiple uh, applications and the most versatile for your practice. If you're looking at a therapy laser, definitely look at the TRIO. If you're looking for something to do light surgery or is very versatile in different applications, uh, this, is, this is a great tool. This is a great tool, it's a good return on investment. If you're doing small animal and equine, small animal large zoologics, it will work on both. It is set up to do both equine and small animal. So that's it. Uh, thank you.